Okay, my Earthship friends. When you look at a used tire, you look at it totally different than the rest of the world looks at it, right? It, this is something valuable to you, except uh, pounding it with dirt takes on new meaning to uh, physical fitness. So this is something that's definitely hard to do. Um, packing tires with a sledgehammer is definitely hard to do. We're going to look at a tool today that um, a guy has designed and he's put a couple videos on YouTube. I'm going to give him full credit for it. His name's JD Humphreys and here's his design that he puts on. He has this on his YouTube channel. You can go down in the comments and find it. I'll put the links down in my comments for his videos because they're excellent videos. This is an excellent uh, tool in my opinion, although I don't have any real world use of it yet, but hopefully I'm going to be on an Earthship build in the next couple weeks. We're going to try it out and see how it works on a real Earthship. Now, JD's used it. If you watch his videos or if you've seen it before, you know he was building a retaining wall or a tire wall um, out of several rammed earth tires. And he built this tool just to speed himself up. And he talks about how much faster this tool made him. Okay. So his dimensions here, this is, he did so detailed. This is this was amazing. When I went to build this, everything's perfectly detailed. The colors, this is super helpful. I just took this to the hardware store. I bought the steel. The issue is the steel's, you know, it's expensive right now. And just buying it at the hardware store, it's, you're paying 10 bucks for a lot of these little sticks that are three feet long. And so it was probably $140 in steel. Now that might sound like a lot. Um, and then of course you have to have some, you know, mediocre welding skills to make this work. Um, but you don't have to have a lot of welding skills, but he has all the parts listed exactly what you need. A lot of the thoughts here of his building process, uh, as far as using it goes. Now I did make some modifications I'll talk about later, but let's put this together real quick. I'm going to show you how it works. The next thing I'm going to show you is my poor design of a tool that was supposed to help lift the rammed earth, lift the tires so that you could ram earth in them better. This was my design I made about four or five years ago and it didn't work out and I just kind of forgot about it and gave up on it. And um, I modified this now so it works better based on JD's design. So he actually helped me make this better. I'm not sure if this is gonna be uh, necessarily more useful than his. Um, it might be faster to get it in the tire and get the tire up, but it might be harder to get out. We're gonna look at both of them and just see which ones uh, seem to work the best. Now we're just doing this here in the garage. It's blowing outside, it's nasty. Um, we're gonna do it inside here. Obviously it's a controlled environment. This is not a real work site but this will show you how much we're gonna expand the tire here, okay? So let's just get down here right now, and I'm gonna use the measuring tape, and we're gonna look inside here and see how much we can expand this tire. So I'm gonna put the, the uh, edge of the tape on the inside of the bead right here, and we're gonna measure the inside of this bead right here, and it's about three and three quarter inches right there, okay? And that's gonna be our baseline. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how this goes together. <clears throat> it's basically seven pieces, and I still don't know which pieces to put together first. We're just gonna start here. Okay. Okay, that's what it looks like. Let's crank it up. Okay, now if we're gonna measure our distance here, that's seven inches. That's seven solid inches. So from almost four till seven, that's a big difference, right? Um, let's just measure it kind of over here between the hooks. Still seven. So three and three quarter to seven inches probably doesn't sound like a lot, but an extra three inches. Um, look how, just look across it right here. Okay. This is where the sidewall would be normally, right? Right along the edge of the tread. So we've raised the sidewall that much, which is a tremendous amount, which is less dirt you have to try to hammer in with a sledgehammer, right? to try to get this to fill up. Now I'll show you just a couple of the changes I made. Uh, one of the changes 
from his plans that I did. He said use a round post here. I ended up using all thread. You can kind of see it right up inside there. But I just put a little small piece of steel pipe on the outside, a couple washers on the top and the bottom just to contain it. And so this actually spins in your hand as you roll it around. So you don't have the rod twisting in your hand as you spin it around. A little nicer, but it does add a little bit of weight, okay? So every little change I made kind of added some weight. Some might have taken a little bit away. Um, I ended up not using the multiple nuts that he used here. This nut right here is a long coupler nut that you'll find in the same section that you'll find this all thread, okay? And this is a coupler nut right here, and this is how long they are. They're about that tall. It's kind of hard to see in the black. Those are two regular nuts, but this is a coupler nut. And I ended up using the coupler nut here because in his plans, he uses a nut here and a nut here, and then has these posts that he welds from here to here to here to here. Well, that jammed my all thread and I couldn't get this to turn no matter what I did. Lube, um, I tried cutting and re-sawing and re-welding them um, at a, you know, a different, trying to put different tension on it and it still jammed it. So I ended up just putting this coupler nut on right here and that seemed to solve that problem. I ended up leaving these off right here because they don't really seem to bend. Um, I was worried that these would bend uh, down as your lifting this up that these would want to bend down this way right here but th they really don't seem to they seem to be pretty straight so i'm going to leave it as it is now i can always fab it later you know fix it um, if i need to i also welded a bottoming out nut here on the bottom um, that'll stop this as i'm pulling this up so that i know that's all the way down now i also welded a nut right here because um, i thought well i could put an electric impact on here and just use the electric impact to run this up and down that'd make it a lot faster and obviously it does um, but the problem with my electric impact is this handle is in the way of the handle of the electric impact the battery actually hits right here so i'll show you how that works in a minute as well okay the other change i made there's two more one i'll show you right now the other i'll talk, take it apart and show you but this is i used 5 8 rod here it's a thicker um it's a thicker rod so it is heavier but I thought that might clear dirt easier because you talked about getting dirt in the threads and using a, keeping a brush handy. Do not lubricate this, he said, because that'll just collect dirt and dust and make it harder to uh, move up and down. So the brush, definitely a good idea, I think. Um, but I went ahead and used 5 eighths just because of a little thicker threads and a little coarser threads, I should say. And I think that'll clear dirt easier. That's a guess, though. I don't have any practical experience with that. Let me show you the last change I made. Okay, here's the last change I made to JD's design. I ended up just cutting these little, this was a 1 8 rod, I think, and I just ground little points on them and then cut them off on the bandsaw, made a bunch of them, and I just stood them on top of here and just hit them with a MIG welder just on a real light setting, and they didn't, they didn't knock them over. They just all stayed in place, and I burned them all in, and these really bite the tires um, really, really well. It doesn't slip, want to slip off at all. So uh, it was a little more extra work, but I'm really happy with that part of it. Okay, now let's just time it and see how long this takes. Okay, so that's setup time. Now you can pour your dirt in, or put your cardboard in, put your dirt in, get it uh, all pushed around on the inside of the tire. Now we'll let it down. Let's time this as well.
Now, as far as cost of this one goes, um, I think it's gonna be a little cheaper. This is just two bar clamps. You can see that I cut the length of the bar right there. And then I used one of these here. I cut the other one here and used it here. So this is just the, the extensions of the bar clamps right here. I welded two little pieces of metal here that are about the same thickness as these. In fact, it's probably just a chunk off one of these that I welded inside there just to keep them apart uh, the right distance so that these slide up and down easily, right? Well, thanks to JD's design, I just welded these up and these are just a little piece with some teeth on it that I can slide on right here on each end. Now let's go ahead and time this one as well and just see how much height we get out of it. Now the tire's still about three and three quarter inches it should be, right? Okay, so that went pretty fast, obviously. A lot less setup, but let's just see how much we get out of the tire there. So that's almost seven inches, right? But it's not uniform all the way around. Let's look over here, you know, 90 degrees from that, and that's about six inches. 90 degrees the other way. And that's six and a half inches. And over here we're getting seven inches okay now let's take it off now what does it look like that should be the edge where the sidewall of the tire is and you can see it's raised up pretty high still it's definitely a little bit higher um, where the clamps are and this may give you more working room in this area and this area versus the other one, which sort of limits your working area on four sides. But with JD's design, you don't have anything in the middle. Okay. Now, if you're not swinging a hammer, if you're just pushing dirt back in here, right? Packing it, packing it, packing it with your hands, or maybe using a, lot, a small sledgehammer or something just to shove dirt with, just to make sure it's all sealed up in there. And then you take this out and then the tire recoils on top of the dirt. Um, that may not be that big of a deal. I'm not sure which one's gonna work better. This one's definitely faster. It gets close to the same height and probably enough. Um, the other limitation of this one is these pieces are a lot bigger here. So when you pull these out, they might be a little harder to pull out because you're not going to be able to like shove them down. Um, you're going to have to work them out because dirt's going to be compacted all around them. And these are bigger pieces that are just going to, I think they're going to jam more easily in the dirt. Okay. And this is what I made these out of. This is a 36 inch bar clamp here. And these are about $30 for a pair on Amazon right now. And so really that's the mechanism I wanted to use that catching mechanism that's real easy to make tight and it's real easy to loosen. Probably don't need that part. Um, so as far as the measurements go, this is a 36 inch, okay? And as far as how I cut these was, this is right at 30 inches, okay? I cut both of those at 30 inches. I used a couple of sections right there. Uh, maybe just one inch pieces, so about two inches total. So a one inch piece here, one inch piece here, and put them inside there and welded them there on top and bottom just to space these apart so that this would slide through easily on each side, right? Okay. And so we'll go ahead and modify this one as well to make it longer so that we can get a little more lift out of the tire and maybe that'll make a difference. It might not. Okay, so my hope is that I can get a little more length out of this. My limiting factor is the length of this right here. Of course, also the length of these. But if I can lengthen this a little bit, um, I don't have any length left over because I've already cut my bars. So what I'm gonna do is cut these off. These are way too long anyway. They stick way inside the tire. I don't need that. But look how far down the bar sticks right here. 
cool right there. So I'm going to cut this rivet out, uh, grind this off, pound it out, and then we're going to weld this on right here. That'll give me another inch in length here. Okay, and what I did here was we cut off the orange piece, right? And that gave us another inch of this steel right here. I also welded on another one inch of a little bit narrower piece. Doesn't have to be perfect um, before I welded this on. So we're actually getting two more inches of length out of this right here, and which will be nice. And then I just welded this 3 8 all thread on here. Okay, now I've got to decide how high to make the legs that go on the outside right here. How tall do we make those? And that's easy. We want to be able to slide this in underneath the bead right there, right? Without having to lift the tire up. So if we slide this under here, this distance right here is how high we want to make it. Okay, so we can measure that pretty easily just by going down here, setting it on tire, making sure this is all the way down here. And it is. And then we'll measure from this part up to the tire bead. And that's four inches right there. Okay. Okay, let's just see if this made much of a difference. Okay, that's good. You can see these just barely bump into the bead there. We'll just have to lift it a little bit to get it past the bead. Doesn't look too bad though. A lot less material under here, right, with those little pieces of all thread. All right. Seven and a half. Um, seven and three eighths. Six and a half. And six and a quarter. Well, six and three eighths. So a little bit of improvement. It looks like, you know, there's the rivet hole. Um, getting rid of these orange legs. These orange uh, pieces made a big difference in replacing them with this all thread, but I don't think I needed to weld that in. Uh, maybe some stronger person, some stronger girl, a stronger guy could pull this up higher and even get more out of it. But honestly, the tire's bulging pretty well. Let's just look at it here. You know, the tire's bulging pretty well there. You can see it's definitely bulging here where the clamp is. And bulging less here but that's still bulging a lot and it looks like we could get plenty of dirt in there even with this uh, two hook mechanism